मानवी Good evening, fellow Toastmasters, and my dear guests present here. Welcome to the meeting of Cabbies Online Toastmasters Club. I am your Sajit at Arms, Manvi Kumar, and I hope you all are as excited as I am for the meeting today. The meeting will be blocked for two hours, and you are expected to stay for the entire duration. Before I officially begin, I would like to state the mission of Toastmasters Club. We provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. Before we start the meeting, I also want to highlight a few key points. Your video should be on and audio should be off. Audio should only be on when you are called to speak or need to speak. Regarding the topics of sex, religion, and politics, even though Toastmasters International does not put any restriction on speaking on these topics, we at Gabby's Online Toastmasters Club request all the speakers, role takers, and guests to be mindful and responsible, and abstain from expressing any controversial views on these sensitive topics. I also urge you to be cognizant of the fact that we as a club practice diversity and inclusion both in letter and in spirit, hence ensuring there are no sexist, racist or any such undertone that creates hostility and discomfort for the members and guests. Let me now call upon the presiding officer for today's meeting. Our presiding officer for today is Distinguished Toastmaster Saurabh Dutta. The president of Gabby's Online Toastmasters Club, DTM Saurabh has played several leadership roles within and beyond Toastmasters. Within Toastmasters, he has been president, distinguished division director and a distinguished area director. And beyond Toastmasters, he has held several leadership positions at director level and above with MNCs and startups. Currently, Saurabh is invested in building his own edtech startup called Practin. Can we give a huge round of applause to distinguished Toastmaster Saurabh? Sir, the stage is all yours. Thank you so much, Manvi. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. Once more. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, sir. If you're wishing me back on, then it's not reaching us. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for joining the meeting of the Gabby's Online Toastmasters Club. I see a few guests. Uh, I see one guest, Dui. Um, I don't know your full name, sir. If you can please quickly introduce yourself, Toastmaster or a guest. All right. Uh... My name is Dewey. I'm from the Indonesia. Hi, I'm, Dewey. Uh, yes, I'm uh, from the Plaza Toyota Toastmaster. Uh, new member in Plaza Toyota Toastmaster in Jakarta. And uh, I want to improve about the public speaking. Uh, about uh, how to be uh, leadership. Maybe mm -hmm. in here, I want to learn from of you. I hope I can uh, take a lesson from this Zoom meeting. I think my interviews, that's all, Mr. Uh, Toastmaster to the Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Dewey, and thank you so much for joining the Gabby's uh, Online Toastmasters Club meeting from all the way from Indonesia. It's a pleasure to have you here. Welcome. We don't have any non-Toastmaster guests. I'm not going to talk about the history of Toastmasters. I have one significant announcement to make for the uh, for this meet particular meeting. Uh, this week, we have got the, the area contest of the 
uh, area B1, B2, B3, and B4. Um, and um, this will be happening on 16th of uh, November, Saturday. I would request all the members uh, of the Gabbies to join this uh, area contest. And um, we have three different clubs. Three different clubs are represented in three different areas in the area contest. So we will have from area B1, uh, we will have, um, I will be representing the club in both the evaluation and the table topic contest. In area B2, which is where we have the Gabby's Online Toastmasters Club, the evaluation and table topic contest, the representative from the Gabby's Online Toastmasters Club will be Toastmaster Arshin Chug. And for area B3, representing the Gabby's International Toastmasters Club in table topics, it will be Toastmaster Mahavir Chand. And for evaluation, it will be Toastmaster Gauri Agarwal. So please do join us uh, in supporting all the can contestants of the Gabby's at the area contest. And um, the dress code for, uh, for those who are attending the contest, it is black. Uh, why it is black? If you're interested to know, please do connect with me. I will explain to you why it is black. But as of now, for this particular meeting, just wanted to let you know that the dress code is black. If you're in based out of Bangalore, please do join us uh, for the area contest. If you're not based out of Bangalore, you're willing to fly down to attend the contest at your own expense, you're most welcome. With this, I would now want to hand over the stage to the Toastmaster of the day. Uh, the Toastmaster of the day for today is an extremely cheerful person, someone who will definitely lift the mood of the meeting from where I am leaving it because as you can probably make out that I'm not keeping too well. So my energy level is extremely down and I'm really looking forward to this person to take it up from here, not just above from where I'm leaving it. Um, this person is um, Toastmaster Sunil Gupta. Toastmaster Sunil Gupta is a very, very handsome man. That's the most important thing about him, which you should know. And there are other things about him which will be of interest to you is that Sunil is an extremely passionate learner of public speaking. He is a working professional associated with a PSU as a senior engineer, very enthusiastic about learning new things to evolve himself. He's an, he has an ardent passion for playing cricket and speaking in English and strong believer in simplicity, integrity and hard working in nature. Over to you, Toastmaster Sunil Gupta, our Toastmaster of the day, to take forward this meeting with the theme connotation. Over to you, Sunil. Thank you, Presiding Officer, for nicely introducing me and calling me handsome. But I think I'm not an handsome more than you. Okay. So good evening, fellow Toastmasters. Distinguished Toastmasters and dear guests. Today we are going to talk about connotations. Let me ask you one thing before we proceed uh, with the theme. How many of you ever had a meal in a hotel or restaurant? Please show me your hands. Saurabh? You, you didn't uh, eat in a hotel? Yes, I did. Yes. I want to remember. Okay. I'm okay. I'm typhoid after that now. Okay. I think almost all. Now, can anybody tell me what we say in English when we get ghar jesa khana in a hotel? Actually, my English is weak. So I want to know that what we say in English, ghar jesa khana. Can anybody tell me? Home cooked food. Home cooked food. Yes. So we say home cooked food, home like food, home style food. Similarly, we use words like home cooking, home science, homemade food. So can you tell me? Why don't we say house like food, house style food, house cooking, house science, house made food, while home and house have the same meaning? 
anyone anybody wants to give us uh, give it a shot so what i think is uh, home is made up of uh, the people while house is only a structure that's why we always called home maker not house maker yes somewhat right anybody or yes meeta home is made by with love and affection and emotion and house is made by bricks and stones yes absolutely right absolutely right because the word home evokes positive feelings of warmth comfort family and security whereas the word house has no feeling and is usually defined as a building to live in by the way isn't it strange that we go out of home and search for home like food let it go so you see that in addition to a literal meaning the word home also carries an additional idea of feeling which is its connotation connotation is nothing but the way a word feels the context around it it's different from denotation which is a dictionary definition or literal meaning of a word do you know connotation of a word can make or break a message for example if you say a product is affordable what do you feel from this sentence not expensive i think it is a literal meaning but the sentence you no know, feels like the product is cheap reasonably priced it is of low quality but instead of it if you say a product is competitively priced you clearly communicate value you don't reduce its quality so connotation can significantly impact the effectiveness of a message either enhancing or undermining its intended meaning further connotation is a further understanding of a word's meaning you can say a hidden meaning there are two words companion and buddy we all know that both have similar meaning similar denotation that is friend can you use both words interchangeably please say yes or no companion and buddy can we can we use both words interchangeably no No. no right so the reason is that the connotation of companion is formal while the connotation of buddy is casual so when in a formal discussion we use companion word and in casually we use buddy now for the benefit of guests i would like to explain the structure of today's meeting like a regular toastmasters meeting in today's meeting we also have three sections prepared speech section table topic section and evaluation section first of all i would like to call upon the general evaluator of the day toastmaster meeta m sa to brief her role and responsibility during the meeting as far as i know about toastmaster meeta there are some members in our three clubs who have a strong desire to attend meetings and learn something and meeta is one of them she is a teacher by passion and profession with a focus on building a strong foundation through early childhood education for children 
please welcome today's general evaluator toast master meeta m sa with a huge round of applause over to you general evaluator toast master meeta m sa thank you toast master of the day sunil gupta for such a wonderful introduction let's give a huge round of applause happy evening distinguished toast masters fellow toast masters and guests i am toast master meeta m sha playing the role of a general evaluator in today's meeting <clears throat> the purpose of the general evaluator is to evaluate everything from starting till the end that takes place throughout the meeting during the meeting i will take make a note on everything that happens and does not happen to help me in this role i have a four man army that is tagle team t as a timer a as an a counter g as a grammarian and last l as a listener so i will evaluate each participant on the meeting and look for a good examples of preparation organization delivery enthusiasm observation and performance of duty at the end of the meeting i will give my report now let's welcome a timer our timer today is toastmaster neha bansal she is a certified image and a soft skill trainer she is founder of inno 8 innov8 u her divide a diverse journey includes being a mother home manager overseeing a family business and culminating in her current role as an entrepreneur she calls herself a lifelong learner joining toastmasters helps her master public speaking to deliver the message with confidence now let's welcome toastmaster neha bansal the virtual stage is yours please introduce your role thank you so much toastmaster meeta m sha good evening everyone i shall be your timer for today as we all know time waits for no one so my role today would be to alert everyone about the timings i shall be your timer for today who will alert you about the table topic speeches prepared speeches and the individual evaluation i will also alert the speakers by showing the red green and yellow virtual cards which are denoting the specific timings so about the prepared speeches uh, i will denote the green card at 5 minutes yellow card at 6 minute and red card will be denoted at 7 minute for the table topics uh, section i will denote the green card at 1 minute at 1 minute 30 second yellow card will be displayed and at 2 and 2 minutes yeah the red card will be raised coming to the individual evaluations two at 2 minute the green card will be raised 2 minutes 30 second yellow card and 3 minutes red card will be raised to alert you about the time so let's get started with this thank you so much you are on mute meeta thank you so much now let's welcome our, our counter toastmaster raul swami he is a health and fitness freak from panchkula haryana now based in hyderabad he is an mba graduate from naipur mohali currently working at sanofi as a marketing analyst with over on 3 years of work experience in his free time he loves to go to the gym and is currently learning mma mixed martial arts thai boxing and kickboxing toastmaster rahul swami the virtual stage is yours over to you rahul swami hello Rahul Swami is here. Okay, no problem. We'll just go to the next one. 
ग्रामेरियन लेट्स वेलकम ग्रामेरियन टोस्ट मास्टर श्रीहरि आचार्य इज अ मेकेनिकल सिम्युलेशन इंजीनियर एट अ रोबोटिक्स स्टार्टअप ही इज एन इविड रीडर एंड अ फिटनेस एंथुसियास्ट लर्न नेटवर्क एंड ग्रो ही जॉइंट द टोस्ट मास्टर्स टोस्ट मास्टर श्रीहरि द वर्चुअल स्टेज इज योर जस्ट एक्सप्लेन योर रोल थैंक यू सो मच स्मिता मैम Uh, today's theme is connotation, and so actually I am playing the grammarian of the day. As a grammarian, I take responsibility in uh, paying attention to all the speakers, listening carefully to their language usage. I'll also take note of any misuses, misusages of the English language, as well as any outstanding words, quotes, sayings, or thoughts. As a grammarian, it is also my responsibility to introduce the word of the day. And today's word of the day is nuance. The meaning is having the subtle differences or distinctions in meaning, feeling, or tone. The usage is her nuanced approach to the topic helped the audience see the complexity of the issue. The artist's nuanced use of the color added depth to the painting. Each speaker is encouraged to use the word of the day, and I'll give a brief report at the end when I'm called upon by uh, by the general evaluator. Over to you, Toastmaster Mita. Thank you so much, Grammarian Toastmaster Shri Hari. Now let's welcome our listener. Uh, Toastmaster Amit Ranjan is a software developer at Google with more than five years of experience in IT industry. in his free time he loves singing bollywood songs and he has recently started traveling to different places he is excited to be a part of toastmasters journey and looks forward to improving his communication skills toastmaster amit ranjan the virtual stage is yours thank you general evaluator meeta ma'am and good evening and good morning to all fellow toastmaster and guests here uh as a listener of the day today i will be listening closely to everything said in during the meeting and uh, at the end and i'll draft some questions uh, to assess uh, our listening skills uh, at the end of the meeting over to you uh, general evaluator thank you so much amit ranjan i think you are on mute yes thank you so much उंटर टोस्ट मास्टर राहुल स्वामी ही इज अल्थ एंड फिटनेस फ्री फ्रॉम पंचकुला हरियाणा नाउ बेस्ड इन हैदराबाद ही इज एन एम बी ए ग्रेजुएट फ्रॉम नाइपर मोहाली करंटली वर्किंग एट सनोफी एज अ मार्केटिंग एनालिस्ट ओवरऑल थ्री इयर्स ऑफ वर्क एक्सपीरियंस इन हिज फ्री टाइम ही लव्स टू गो टू द जिम एंड इज करंटली लर्निंग एम एम ए मिक्स मार्शल आर्ट साई बॉक्सिंग एंड किक बॉक्सिंग टोस्ट मास्टर राहुल the virtual stage is yours over to you thank you very much general evaluator uh, hi everyone today i am the r counter um, and my role is to uh, focus on all the unnecessary words and sounds used by all the speakers and role players of the today's meeting so i will be focusing on five major areas number 1 is the filler words like a uh, m mm, r second is inappropriate interjections for instance and well but so you know third is use of crutch words similar to basically actually this thing etc fourth is repetitive words or phrases in the form of i i or this means this means fifth and the last is unintentional long pause long or short pauses made by all the speakers so i will present the rest of my report when called upon by by the general evaluator during the 
the run evaluation session. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Now, uh, I'll uh, hand over to the Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Sunil Gupta. I'll be coming last at the end of the meeting to give my evaluation report. Over to you. The virtual stage is yours. Thank you, General Elevator, and your sincere team for precisely telling us about your roles. Connotation is also personally or culturally defined. Let me know how many of us are sitting on the chairs right now. Yes, I am on the bed. Two, two, three. Saurabh also, yeah. So the word chair denotes, you know, a furniture we sit on. Can you tell me two different connotations or different meanings, different feelings we receive from the word chair we use in our day-to-day -day life? Uh, two one, different. Is, uh, one is maybe to something to relax on, to sit on and chill, relax. That's what feeling I get from chair. Anyone? Amit talks about the furniture. I am talking about different from furniture. Sharing the meeting, I think uh, hosting the meeting kind of connotation, right? Yes, yes. Number one is, yes, correct. Number two. Yeah, yes. Hint is officially, we use officially. Okay, I'll tell you. You are in mute, Toshmasa Sunil. So number yes. one is number one is we use the word chair for you know the head of an institution, chairman, mm. chairperson. Okay, and as uh, someone told, I don't know that uh, uh, chair is the person who steers the affair of a meeting. In contest, we use we to, we use the word contest chair recently. Now let's talk about cultural connotation. There are colors. No, white color, red color, yellow color. So do you know white color is a color, but it connotes two different meanings, two different feelings. In Western countries, it is a symbol of purity and innocence. While in Asian countries, like in India, it is a symbol of mourning or sadness. Similarly, red color in Western countries, it connotes love and passion. In China, it connotes good luck. Similarly, a hand gesture, thumbs up, we use in our meetings. In Western countries and in, in India, we use as an approval. But in Middle East, it connotes an insult. You cannot use thumbs up. Let's start the prepared speech section. Today, the first and only speaker is Toastmaster Sumit Setia. He will be evaluated by Toastmaster Upasana Ghosh. I would request both of them to confirm their presence. I think both are present. Yes. Yes, I'm there. there. Okay, okay. Toastmaster Sumit is originally from city of Tajmal, Agra, and currently working in Bangalore. He has a background in the fashion industry, specializing in sourcing leather products. One of his strong desires is to become a public speaker and confidently address large audiences. Having worked in five different cities across India, he is passionate about exploring new places. He also loves traveling to the mountains, especially trekking. In his free time, he loves watching sports, especially lawn tennis and football. Today, 
he is going to present level 1 mastering fundamentals project 2 writing a speech with purpose of the path presentation mastery the purpose of this project is to learn or review basic methods of writing a speech with a defined purpose and to present a well organized speech on any topic timer please note the speech length is 5 to 7 minutes the title of the speech is road less traveled toastmaster sumit sethia road less traveled road less traveled toastmaster sumit sethia thank you for the introduction kind introduction toastmaster of the day good evening fellow toastmasters distinguished toastmasters and guests have you ever taken a trip that changed you in unexpected ways well in 2017 i set out on what i thought would be a typical mountain trip but what followed was beyond my expectations the road i took wasn't just winding through hills it was winding through my own expectations breaking them and teaching me lessons i thought i never needed to learn since then i have realized that transformative moments in our lives does not come when everything is going smoothly these moments come when we find ourselves on the road less traveled and today i want to take you along on a few of my own journey which have shaped me who i am today in 2017 i did my first mountain trip to mclaur ganj with my three friends i am someone who likes to stick to the plan but when things get changed at the last minute i usually feel frustrated i remember this incident when we were planning to visit dalai lama temple i insisted my friends that we must visit this temple in the morning to avoid any traffic since it gets closed early in the evening but they didn't agree with me as fate would have it we got stuck in the traffic and missed our visit initially i was upset but being on a 5 day trip i had no choice but to accept i realized sometimes it is okay to let go of a rigid plan sometimes it is uh, being flexible is the real adventure now let me take you to another mountain trip which i did in 2022 i did this trek to shitidhar glacier in sisu which is a beautiful place in himachal pradesh this was a challenging trek and i was joined by my cousin and two strangers i had just met at the hostel as we started this trek we lost our trail we didn't know what where to go and we did not have any network signal to call for any help since we had already covered 4 kilometers we decided to move forward and try out different paths after few hours trying out different paths we found the correct one and reached the glacier i learned from this experience that when we start out on any path even if it seems unclear at the beginning we often find our way forward 
as we continued this trick, my cousin said to me, this is so boring. I'm not doing this again. It's so exhausting for me. I thought in my mind, I have also covered the same distance, yet I felt differently. Trekking isn't boring for me, even after covering 20 kilometers in a day. Instead, I feel energized by it because I love trekking. These moments realized that when we start what we love, even the hardest journeys feel lighter. Travel has taught me adaptability, flexibility, and resilience. Each journey, no matter how challenging it is, has brought me understanding myself and others better. I encourage you all to explore new places, new neighborhoods, or maybe new corner of your mind. You might be surprised by what you discover, not only about the world, but about yourself. Over to you, Toastmaster of the day. Timer, please let us know if the speaker is qualified or disqualified in connection with the timing of the speech. Yeah, absolutely. is uh, qualified. Five minutes, 44 seconds taken by the speaker. Okay. Now it is 8.8. Eight. We'll take a, a five minutes break. We'll come back at 8.12. Okay. Now let's start the meeting. There are two sentences which have the same meaning. I'm going to put them in the chat box. This task is difficult. This task is challenging. Tell me which sentence, you know, feels like a, a positive or which sen sentence gives you a negative feeling. Difficult. Difficult as negative and uh, positive uh, as challenging. You are on mute, Sunil. So Rahul, you are right that the word difficult has a negative connotation. It suggests that there are problems ahead. Challenging has a positive connotation. It suggests the problems will be overcome. So a word can have a positive, a neutral, a negative connotation. Let's test how will you understand positive or negative connotation? Let me share the screen. You have to tell me that which phrase has the most negative connotation among these three phrases. A wild animal, a savage animal, a tame animal. A, a savage animal. animal. A savage animal, right. Peek at someone, glare at someone, or look at someone. Glare. Peek at someone. Glare at glare someone. At some. Glare at someone. 
demand something, request something, or ask demand. for something. Demand. 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 demand something. Correct. Shut the door, slam the door, or close the door. Slam. The door. Slam. 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 Very intelligent audience. Okay. Now, which phrase is the most positive connotation among these three phrases? Feeling overjoyed, feeling glad, feeling satisfied. Feeling overjoyed. Overjoyed. Correct. An impatient person, an eager person, excited, an excited, an excited, an excited person. <laughs> All are MA in English, I think. Something special, something special. strange. Something special. Okay. Having a meal, having a snack, feast. having a feast. Feast. Having a feast. Feast. Having a feast. Yes, yes. Right. Let's move on to the table topic section. To conduct this section, I would like to invite the table topic master of the day, Toastmaster Suchita Nagar. Toastmaster Suchita Nagar, originally hailing from Delhi, has made Mumbai her home. Mm -hmm. As a dedicated talent acquisition partner at a prominent medical device company, she excels in her professional role. Outside of work, she cherishes her time exploring new destinations and creating memorable moments with her child. Toastmaster Suchita, the stage is all yours. Thank you, team, uh, team Mort. Good evening, fellow Toastmaster and guests. Welcome to the table topic session of today's meeting. Many of us consider this, this is the most challenging and the most rewarding part of the table topic meeting and rightly so because table topic prepare you for impromptu speech speeches during table topic i will invite a member or guest to attempt a table topic i will give out a table uh, a topic once the participant confirm their willingness to attempt the topic while you are free to volunteer we are we may not able to accommodate all the volunteers. At the Gabbies, we believe in giving opportunity to those who are more keen to participate and those who need a little nudge. I will be using my discretion as the table topic master in case we are not able to, to give an opportunity to a volunteer. Please don't be disheartened. There is always one more meeting. There is never a dirt of opportunity in Toastmaster. So each speaker will get one to two minutes of time. You need to speak a minimum of one minute and maximum of two minutes, 30 seconds to qualify for the polo. Green card at the one minute, yellow card at one minute, 30 seconds, and the red card at two minutes. You will be getting additional 30 second grace time to wrap up your speech by two minutes, 30 seconds. <clears throat> so as I've seen, uh, Ilios uh, and De Diana. Diana, first I'll give the topic to Diana. Uh, Just give me a uh, minute. For you. It's a table topic evaluator. I am the table topic evaluator. Yeah. Okay. So for the table topic evaluator, uh, Saurav is today evaluating for table topic speeches. <laughs> Diana, your topic is, what's one idea that you have changed your mind on throughout this year? What one idea that you have changed your mind on throughout the year? Um, Elias, I'll give the next topic to you. If you were president for a day, what would be your first action to the country? I'll also paste uh, in the chat box. If you were president for the for a day, what would be your first action to the country? Over to you. 
Uh, am I audible and visible before I start? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll start. My fellow citizen of Indonesia, thank you for choosing me as your president of Indonesia. And as I said before in my campaign, I would like to increase the economy of Indonesia and also, I would like to open more for the job opportunities to help to establish a better economy to be spread among our archipelago, to bring a good nuance to our country. And also, I will try to visit all of the region and the government, the local government, so we can coordinate between the central, also the local government. And I would like to continue the project from our, our last president, the seventh president. He is one of the most prominent figure in this country. We believe that me, succeeding him as the next president will try our best to fulfill and to continue which is the new city the the new the work the capital city of indonesia into the borneo island the name is ikn ibu kota negara and also, I would like to bring all of those the, the ministries on the cabinet to go into the a training, a military training, so we can increase our mentality and we can serve better for our nation. Indonesia jaya, jaya, jaya. It means in English, Indonesia, we are the best. Go, go, go. Back to you. Thank you for the great attempt, uh, Ilias. And uh, you did justice for the topic. My next topic is uh, guest Sana M. Hey, hi. So your topic is, do you think people can change? Why or why not? Do you think people can change? Why or why not? That's such a thoughtful topic. Um, let me give you my example. I think people can change and I can be the best example. So um, going into my childhood, I, I was a really shy and introverted kid. And I used to be the last person to even go for a question that has been asked by a teacher. Even I knew the answer, but I would be very hesitant that I would get all the attention and this would just put me in the limelight. But as the years passed by, I started to realize that socializing or networking can lead to new experiences and eventually you will meet new friends and uh, you will get to know people and then this will make your life a little better because in the end everyone human being is a social animal so as I, I as i went from school to college i started to realize that being in a surrounding i uh, i my schooling has been done where i resided in my parents house and then i went for a college where i was in a hostel so i was put in an environment where people were there and i had room shared with other uh, other girls so it started with that and I started to, you know, get from there and then to the class and I started to socialize more and it ended up changing my whole personality, I would say. So going from a shy, introverted kid, I started to become more and more uh, social, I would say. And coming to now at present, I feel like I 
have changed. You know, I like meeting people. I like networking. I like going going out to different events where I meet new people and understand their background and, you know, how their life is. So I like, uh, I I like to experience and meet new people. And from my example, you can see like uh, I've changed a lot from coming from a very shy, silent kid to now a very not even I would say I wouldn't be saying that I'm completely extrovert, but I would say I have turned into an ambivoted nature. So I would say that yeah, people do change, and I can be the best example for that. Thank you. Thank you for attempting the topic, and it, I also agree. I also changed uh, while I was shy. Uh, now I am little open and speaking with the people, and change is always required. We'll go for the next topic. And uh, I would like to call uh, Geswami. Geswami, are you there? Mm -hmm. We'll go for the next person as Swami hasn't uh, given his ex um, presence. Uh, Prasang, Prasang Manav, mm -hmm. are you there? Uh, okay. Yes, thank you. Okay. I'll give my next topic to you. Uh, the topic is, what is one loss you took in your life that eventually turned out to be a win? What okay. is one loss you, you took in your life that eventually turned out to be a win? Over to you. What is the one loss that I took in my life that eventually come out as a win? Um, I was uh, in my 12th and, uh, you know, I was a kind of guy uh, who used to be very shy and I was not kind of, you know, a guy who wanted to go away from the home. I was very close to my parents and uh, my village. After completing the 12th, now it was time for me to decide what I want to do. And I wanted to become a teacher, right? That was my interest. But my parents had different plans, like every Indian parents. They wanted me to do engineering, even though I did not have an interest for that. So at the end, I had no other option than accepting my parents' option to go for JE. And for that, I had to go to Kota. So I went to Kota. I, I had no interest. Initially, I was crying over the year. I was alone. But I kept focusing on my study because I knew that they have invested money in my education. And I was able to concentrate on education, my education after a couple of months. And at the end, I was able to get a rank in j -Main. And through that, I got into a college did my best over there and I, I come out of as an engineer. So this is the one of the things which in which I was not interested. I was totally denying that I will not do the engineering, but because of my parents, I went there and uh, I made my career. So this is the thing I thought that I would lose, but I came out as a winner. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Thank you and a good attempt. And I know like every parents uh, did a good job uh, uh, for the kids uh, to encourage on career path. And we think like we are not, uh, they are talking about not a good, but eventually it went good. Thank you for attempting the topic. My next topic is uh, guest uh, or visitor, uh, Bala. Bala, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm just switching on my camera. Uh, so my next topic to you is, what would you change about the modern school system? What would you change about the modern school system? Over to you. Raise your hands if you have heard about Carnot engine. 
If you're not heard, it's okay. It doesn't matter. Such an engine does not exist in real life. But Carnot engine is the most perfect engine on paper. I used to study this and I would not understand why I'm studying it. Today, when I'm in the corporate world, there are different nuances in corporate world. Would anyone talk about the Carnot engine? I do not think so. If I were to change the education system, ladies and gentlemen, I would definitely bring in those aspects into the education system, which help us going forward. Now it's debatable that how can you know that one will become an engineer, one will become a doctor, one will become a writer, one will become a cricketer. Definitely we do not know, but what is practical is more important. I definitely do not agree with teaching those Carnot engines in the syllabus. Because firstly, that Carnot engine itself is not 100% perfect. Then why put it there in the syllabus? Second, if you really want to bring in something, why don't you take the students onto a field trip to really understand how an engine is made? how an engine can perform, that will remain in their heart much more than that paper-based Carnot engine. I would like to conclude by saying that it's not easy to completely change the education system, but if I got a chance, I definitely would make it much more practical than theoretical. I would do that. Would you all agree? Back to you, David Rockmaster. Thank you, Bala. Uh, good attempt. And I also agree. Uh, studies has to be more practical than theoretical. Thank you for attempting the topic. My next topic is uh, Toastmaster Rahul. Your topic is How much do you think fashion influence physiology? much do you think fashion influence physiology? Over to you. I think that fashion influence a lot, not just physiology. It also influences that how people perceive you in your social circle. If you are dressing you're not dressing well, tied up, uh, clean, and uh, not looking presentable, people may not take you seriously on the things which they should take, or they will not respect you enough. So I believe that it's very important to have a good fashion sense. <clears throat> you should know in which occasion you should wear what, and how you should dress up, how you should present yourself in the best possible manner so that you yourself also feel confident. Um, there was one party I uh, went to and um, I myself was not feeling confident just because I was not having good pair of shoes that day. And that definitely affected my psychology and in turn it affects the other person's psychology also as they judge you based on your clothing we may say that looks doesn't matter but my friend looks do matter and i think everything matters in this life when it comes to presenting yourself thank you very much over to you Thank you, uh, Toastmaster Rahul. Uh, yes, sometimes we really need to be dressed up very well where we are going. And um, I felt uh, sometimes it's okay to be normal. And Toastmaster also says 
presence is also required in your speech or uh, dressing sense thank you over to you to uh, toastmaster of the day uh, sunil suchita please read the speech of diana okay sure i'll read out thanks table topic master lady lady and gentleman one minute now my change was idea in throughout nouns mind last year challenge the year this club meeting i felt that get in my mind uh, without speech was stressful nouns my life has struggled inside uh, kitty in my life nouns front audience with my nurse ner nervous uh, was she hand off type uh, on the chat box nouns to hear from toast master nouns with my speech speak i have great chance in life thanks table topic over to you thank you table table topic master for conducting a beautiful session timer please let us know that if there is any disqualification in the table topic section no there is no disqualification okay now i would also request the zoom master to launch the polls let's do an activity okay i will put some sentences in the chat box one by one first you have to identify a word in each sentence that has a positive or negative connotation means it means that the word has connotation then you have to replace that word with a word having the opposite connotation okay now i am going to put the first sentence in the chat box now you have to tell me that which words has connotation whether positive or negative in this nosy. sentence nosy 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 okay. so which kind of connotation negative. it has negative negative yeah. connotation negative. negative negative so now can you replace a word having positive connotation uh concern my pair curious empathy no anyone caring supportive supportive, supportive. okay somewhat positive <laughs> okay i'll tell you interested it could it can be changed to interested like my parents are also so interested in what i am doing next google thank you google google, google. so it is Careful. positive or positive positive good now can we replace the word frugal with a negative word negative connotation word yeah miser stingy stingy correct so we can change the word uh, frugal with stingy 
she is super stingy because she is saving for college now last day okay i have to put in the chat box first Confidence. 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 So it has positive uh, con positive. connotation or positive. Positive. positive? positive. So make the sentence negative by doubt. 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 This is opposite doubt. of the confidence. Fear. Not... Fear. Fear. Overconfidence. Over... The word should should have a lit same little meaning. But different uh, connotation. Superiority. Self doubt. Nervousness. Anxious. Anxious. Somewhat similar. Okay. We can replace the word confidence with word arrogance. They have a lot of arrogance about their abilities. Now, I will hand over the stage to the general evaluator, Toastmaster Mita Emsa, to present her and her team members' evaluation report. Thank you. Over to you, general evaluator. Mita, you are in mute. Yes, thank you, Toastmaster. I mean, Toastmaster of the day uh, for the wonderful sessions you have done. And now I'll just uh, want to call upon our uh, first evaluator, our uh, Toastmaster Upashna D. Ghosh. Uh, will be evaluating the speaker, Toastmaster Sumit Sethia. I request the Zoom moderator to spotlight the speaker and the evaluator. Zoom moderator, can you spotlight? They are on spotlight, ma'am. Okay, fine. Thank you. So, Toastmaster Upashna Digosh is a chirpy, happy-go-lucky bookworm who loves to eat, cook, travel, listen to music, and read about Indian mythology. She's been fortunate enough to visit 13 different countries and love exploring new cultures. Currently, she works as a senior technical writer for an MNC. She is the treasurer of the Gabby <clears throat> International Toastmasters Club. Toastmaster Upasna Digosh, the virtual stage is yours. Over to you. Thank you so much. So, with you have opened your speech with a question and that really drew the audience uh, towards your speech and which made your speech more interactive and captivating from the start. I love the way you use the pauses that added depth and impact to your speeches and your words have had more impact. Your two stories were extremely tight and very crisp. In this time span, covering two stories is a tough job, but you nailed it. And I loved how you have captured every nuances of both the stories and gave an impactful experience for the audience. Your message was extremely clear towards the end. You had a very strong takeaway and your concise conclusion was a perfect wrap-up. Uh, now moving on towards point of improvement um, one very small suggestion I feel that thanking the TMOD is not required because it takes up at least five to eight minutes uh, sorry uh, five to eight seconds so you can directly start your speech which will save time also uh, I would want you to do a quick audio video check before your speech starts uh, today uh, it happened that I could see until here. I mean, from here it was visible. So if you could have gone a bit back, then we could have seen your complete structure until your torso. So if that were, if you can manage that, that would give a greater impact to your speech. 
uh, and even have a, a visual impact also. Also, I saw there was very minimum amount of hand gestures. Since uh, your hands were down, so I feel that if you could give one or two hand gestures, hand movements, that would give a very open and uh, welcoming impact towards the audience. I understand that everybody is nervous before the speech, yet if you practice, I'm sure you'll, you'll become a perfect uh, speaker. And adding to your vocal variety, in my opinion, I felt you had a very good story. Two stories were very good. If you could have a, a vocal variety, as in when you were describing the mountains, if you could bring out your excitement, I'm sure you were excited in real life. Even when you said that your cousins uh, said that this is such a boring uh, trek, if you could have bought that as an audience, we could connect more to your story. So if you can work upon these, I'm sure your speech will be elevated and it would be more interesting. Overall, this was a very well-crafted, impactful speech with a very great message with a few tweaks here and there, like adding uh, vocal variety and refining your visuals. Your presentation will reach new heights and you did a very great job. Looking forward to hear more from you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, General Lua. Thank you, sorry, evaluator for the speech. Let's give a huge round of applause to both speaker and the evaluator. Mm. Yes, so Toastmaster uh, Upasana, what you gave evaluation is really a good. You said that correctly what exactly it was. And I, I uh, truly agree with what the evaluator has told for the speaker because their face was not fully visible. That is true. And the hand gesture. So overall, it was really wonderful uh, evaluation you have done. Great job. And uh, see you later on more, uh, more taking up the stage time. Thank you. Table, I mean, our evaluator, speech evaluator, Toastmaster Upasana Ghosh. Next, we'll have a table topic evaluator. So now, let me call upon the table topic evaluator. Mita, Mita. Yes. Uh, Swarav Dutta will evaluate after the Tagle team. Sure. Yes, no yes, yes. Okay. So now, uh, Tagle uh, role taker all. Please keep your uh, ready, your uh, this one reports ready. Uh, now I request all the uh, Tagle role. It's time to call all the report for uh, my four men army that is Tagle team. So timer report. From Toastmaster Nia Bansal. Can you uh, uh, share your report? Toastmaster yeah, Nia second. Just, over to you. Just a second. Okay. So I'll share the screenshot later on. This is the half screenshot. I'm sorry for that. However, um, all the participants are qualified. There is no disqualification in today's evaluate um, in today's timing. So all the table topic speakers, the prepared speech speakers, and the evaluators, everybody is qualified for today's uh, meeting. And um, I'll just give the screenshot in the chat. Thank you. So thank you for uh, taking up this table. I mean timer role. Thank you, Nia Bansal. And that was a really very crisp and. Uh, Perfect uh, table, I mean, uh, timer report. Now, next, uh, I'll just call upon, let's give a huge round of applause to the timer. Now, I'll call an our counter report, Toastmaster Rahul Swami. Can you share your report? Over to you. Sure, General Evaluator Meeta. I am sharing my screen. One minute. Is my screen visible? So this is the our counter report. I think all of us were fine. Um, Di Diana was not having any filler and uh, visitor Bala 
um, kudos to you and uh, speaker Sumit. I think he had an amazing speech, but um, only one you know and three short pa short pauses I could identify. Rest, uh, there was the new city, the new city by Alios, and you will, you will, um, by Shuchita, and I think yeah, she was the one. So rest is fine. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rahul Swami, for your uh, crisp and uh, this one re uh, report, our counter report. Let's give a huge round of applause to the our counter, Rahul Swami. You could have said that today it was a great day that nobody got much ahs or arms or so many. It was very minimal. So great job everyone has done. You could have appreciated to make them motivate to take up next time role. Next over to you. I mean, next our uh, grammarian report. Uh, Toastmaster Shri Hari, can you give your report over to you, Shri Hari? Sure, ma'am. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, word of the day was uh, nuance. And I'm happy that uh, quite a few people have used it. Uh, Toastmaster Ilios, Gesbala, Diana, Rahul, and Upasana Ghosh. We have also had a good usages in the meeting. Evokes historic literal connotation or denotation all by the Toastmaster of the day. And adaptability, flexibility, and resilience by uh, Sumit. Limelight and social animal by guest... Uh, um, uh, by, by, by our guest and uh, Upasana Ghosh has used uh, a few tweaks uh, refining the visuals. Uh, rhetorical devices, we have had a couple of them to bring good economy, to bring good nuance. How can one be a doctor? How can one be an engineer? How can one be a teacher? Uh, and a road less travel, that's a proverb. Uh, hypophora have be, has been used by uh, Toastmaster Smith in the very beginning of his speech. Have you ever taken a road trip that changed your life? I once did it in 2020. Uh, rule of three have been used by Toastmaster Ilios. Go, go, go. And get sana. I like to network. I like to be social. I like to go out. That is all from uh, uh, the grammarian send. Over to you, Mita, ma'am. Thank you so much for your grammarian crisp and very interesting like uh, very informative also thank you for your grammarian report let's give a huge round of applause to the grammarian <clears throat> now let's listen our uh, the listeners uh, skill of listening so let's call our listener toastmaster amit ranjan yeah thank you Nita. Uh, as promised i have come up with uh few interesting questions and let's see how attentive uh, you are during the meeting. So question one, uh, what was the since uh, topic of the, uh, since uh, agenda of the meeting is uh, connotation and denotation. So I have few questions about it. So question first, what was the connotation of, of color red in Western culture and in China? In China, it is good luck. Okay. Is it urgency? It is for love. Okay. Happiness, love. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Second question is around about connotation. Uh, what is the connotation of thumbs up in Middle East country? Offensive. Yep. Insult, offensive. Yeah, that's totally right. Okay. Coming to third question. Uh, what was the Title of speech by uh, Toastmaster Sumit today. Roadless travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And last but not the least, what was the table tap topic for uh, Toastmaster Ilios? If I were a president for a day. Oh, correct, correct. <clears throat> yeah, I think you all are uh, really attentive to this meeting. Uh, yeah, over to you, General Valentine. Let's give a huge round of applause for our listener, Toastmaster Amit. 
thank you so much all the active listeners because all the answers was given by Sri Hari and most of the answers and Toastmaster Upasana. So thank you for your answer listeners and all the best for next thing upcoming. So now I call upon our uh, TT uh, table topic evaluation. Toastmaster Saurav Dutta. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster. Uh, uh, so let's welcome our to Toastmaster, I mean DTM, DTM Saurav Dutta for his ev table topic evaluation. Already he is introduced in the beginning of as a PO address and he's taking this role. So I'll not be, since it is already introduced, I'll not be introducing again, but he is the president of our, uh, the Gabby's Online Toastmasters Club. And uh, over to you, DTM Saurabh. Mr. Toast. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Meeta. So, um, first of all, uh, my sincere apologies. My internet just started playing up just before I was about to deliver my table topic evaluation. And also, I missed uh, the most of the part of what Rahul said. Uh, there was uh, So, Rahul, I am sorry, I will not be able to evaluate you. So, I could only hear up to Bala. Um, so... I will just stick my to my evaluation for my speaker. So the first speaker was Dina. Um, Dina, your topic was what's one idea that have that you have that that has changed uh, in your mind um, that has brought a change in you. Uh, that roughly around that and your um, speech again. You talked about Toastmasters essentially about you joining Toastmasters and how that changed your life. Uh, you becoming more confident in terms of delivering your speech. And um, as I always mention that you have this unique ability of delivering your speech on chat and you are getting better and better every day with that particular skill. So yes, uh, Dina, I totally agree with you. That was a great idea when you decided to join Toastmasters. And we need, need more people like you and Toastmasters who have such unique communication skills because speaking, uh, you know, communication is not only about speaking, it's about expressing yourself. And I know your challenges, despite that, you do a very good job in terms of expressing yourself, in terms of connecting with the audience. People love to listen to you. People love to have you amongst oh. them. And that is what makes communication effective, right? So, Dina, you are a very good example of an effective communicator. Continue to be what you are. Moving on to Elias. Um, Elias, um, you know, an evaluator, any evaluator, loves it when the speaker takes their feedback seriously they implement the feedback and i must thank you for doing that so i remember in the last time when i evaluated you i told you Elias, speak slowly take pause give gaps between words uh, you know give a little bit of spacing and pacing is what you should look at because we are from different uh, backgrounds and uh, there's always all of us have got a mother tongue influence. So it becomes difficult for a global audience to understand you clearly, given the different accent that you have. Um, and you have done that. Today, you spoke much, much slowly. And that is good because that is what makes us feel that, you know, we are valuing what we are seeing. Addressing the audience directly was a very smart move. I think that's something that all of us can learn whenever you're given a hypothetical situation. Like, imagine you are the president of a country. Instead of saying that, okay, if I were the president of a country, if you just say, you actually imagine and start talking like a president, which is what uh, Ilios did. Or for example, imagine that you got 5 lakh rupees or, you know, five five hundred million dollar lying on the road. Then you, instead of saying that, Okay, let me imagine I got 500 million instead of saying that if you say, oh my God, is it a 500 million dollar lying on the road? I can't believe it. You know, that immediately builds that connection with the audience, which you did, Elias. Uh, after that, Elias, it dipped. After that, it was not a speech. It was not the president of, the, of Indonesia talking to us. It was Elias doing a table topic. That shift should not have happened, Elias. You should have kept on delivering your speech as the president. You should have kept on making those false promises. You should have kept on energizing us, enthusiasm, you know, enthusing us, and keep on doing all those things, which politicians do and get away with. And uh, But then what what I, I found a little lacking in terms of the body, you kind of made up in the conclusion where you said, uh, you know, um, Jaya 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 Indonesia, Jaya Jaya Jaya. So Elias, yeah, Jaya 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 and Elias, go, go, go. Uh, good one, Elias. And continue to just keep the momentum at a certain level. Don't let it dip. It's just two minutes and you are always full of energy. Coming to Sana Sana, you there? 
Uh, I don't see her. Yes. Yeah. So, Sana, your topic was, do you think people can change? Why or why not? So, um, Sana, uh, avoid commenting on the topic. That's one golden rule in table topic. Never, ever say this was a good topic. This was an interesting topic. Uh, this is not required. You are not a table topic master evaluator. You are a table topic speaker. So even if the topic is pathetic, you will still have to speak on that topic. You don't have a choice, right? So there's no point in wasting time there. Avoid saying that, let me give you an example. Do you ever, you're taking away the surprise element for it. You're already mentally preparing me that, okay, now her life story will come. Surprise me, just like Ilya surprised us, saying that, hello, 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 I'm the president of Indonesia, right? That was a surprise element. So, Retain that surprise element. Don't say that, you know, um, let me give you an example. Now, uh, one thing that you had is you had a personal story, which is very, very commendable. In every time in table topic, we say that the personal story adds credibility to the speech. You talked about your personal story, your hostel days and all that. Now, what you need to understand is where to shift from the story to the message, because your story almost went on through the end of the speech. Now, I made a similar mistake in the division contest uh, last year where I told a story about my dad and I took the story right up to almost the last 30 seconds. I wasn't disqualified, but I did not have enough time to give the message. Remember, at the end of the day, there has to be a message or a call to action for the audience, which was not there. Part of that is also because you have indul you indulge in something. And I've heard you before also, Sana. Um, one thing which you have to be a little cautious about is called pleonism. So pleonism means using more word than what's necessary. If you go back and uh, analyze your speech, you will say that you stole in 200 words what could have been told in 20 words. So try to avoid that. Be a little bit uh, more rational and ration the usage of words. Because just because words are free, don't use them freely. Uh, moving on to Prasang. Um, what is one loss you took in your life that eventually turned out to be a win? Prasang, are you there? Prasang, oh, yes. Yes. So, um, uh, Prasang, don't repeat the topic verbatim. That's a dead giveaway that you are trying to think, right? That, that makes it very obvious. Instead of that, rephrase the topic or just like, for example, you said that um, the topic was what is one loss you took in your life that eventually turned out to be a win. You started like this. What is one loss you I took uh, that eventually turned out to be a win? Don't do that. Instead of say that, that one loss, hmm. right? The same thing. But you're not repeating the topic verbally, verbatim, right? If you're repeating the topic verbatim, it becomes very apparent that you are thinking. So don't do that. Now, uh, another issue is, what is the loss? You didn't mention any loss. You mentioned about you not having interest in doing something. Not being interested is not a loss, right? I think I will lose, then you said at the end. That is also not an actual loss. A loss is a loss, Losing money, loss. Losing a dear one, loss. Losing cash, loss. Losing a job, loss. Losing a relationship, loss. That's a loss. Losing interest or not having interest is not a loss. So try to think of something where you actually had a loss. Right? That part was missing. Your story was very good in terms of the gain. But the loss was not there. What was the question? The loss. Uh, then comes uh, Bala. Uh, this is the last speaker that I could evaluate. Uh, Bala, your topic was what would you what would you change about the modern school system? Uh, Bala, I absolutely loved your opening. Um, though I, I personally understood where you're coming from. Um, it was something similar to pre visualization in 3 ds right? Where you ask a term and then no one knows the answer to it. And then you say, you know, so this is what you learn in school. Why do you learn in school? Um, and though I knew that where are you going with this, I was still intrigued because your delivery style is good. You have uh, this one. Um, you have a very calm and controlled way of delivery. Now, um, that example and everything was fine. Now, the only thing, Bala, uh, you know, um, and probably it is because I'm 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 listening to you uh, multiple times now. That probably I'm seeing a pattern in you, uh, which may not be in the contest. That may not be so counterproductive. But just from my standpoint, um, I think Bala, it becomes a bit dragged after a certain point of time. Your start is always good. Um, you also try to have a empathetic ending. But during the middle, it always, I feel you are dragging things a little bit. You know, your voice drags, your tone drags. The, the way is like you 
try to it it kind of looks like you're waiting you're watching the timer and just trying to elongate the speech enough to reach the timing mark and um it becomes very obvious so uh, think about it do you really need to speak for 2 minutes on every topic i don't think so your speech could have actually ended in 1 minute and uh, you would have done a much better job rather than trying to take it all the way to 2 minutes so i think this is one mistake we often do that we have to speak for 2 minutes otherwise we will not get it so i think yes elios i think you also have the same problem elios thank you for bringing that up i i noticed this for elios as well if your speech gets over in 1 minute please stop at 1 minute you don't need to wait for the red card to come up there in within the contest there are no brownie points for speaking for 2 minutes if you speak for less than 1 minute only then you get disqualified so as soon as you are done speaking the green card is up end it with a bang and move on that's it from my side thank you so much back to you toastmaster as a general evaluator thank you so much uh, table topic evaluator dta uh, Distri distinguished toastmaster saurav datta let's give a huge round of applause we should appreciate though our, our distinguished toastmaster saurav datta is not keeping well literally but he has taken today two roles as a presiding officer as well as table topic evaluator that's a, it's not an easy task to handle this both the main roles so great job and uh, let's give a, again one more time let's give a huge round of applause if you are virtually please give that that way so great job done so now i'll begin my report of the meeting so the meeting room was set up but there was little bit late because it has to be essay or nt mode has to see that we open the meeting by 7:15 because we can do av check we can check the roll takers are all uh, on time so that was a bit little lacking and the meeting started at 7:31 so one minute it's never we have late at the gabis we never be a late but today it was just one minute difference and the guest was welcomed upon the arrival the guest the po has done the best job and the guests were informed yes the guest list was already shared in the guest group so already it was done and the essay the sergeant at arms so i'll come from the sergeant at arms the sergeant at arms fill all the roles yes but there was the only sergeant at arms role was missing but that i can say that toastmaster manvi handled the situation and she just took it up so that's a great job done by toastmaster manvi let's give a huge round of applause to manvi and the meeting only one minute late next the presiding officer yes prepared and he was already organized then was a properly introduced to all the guests and uh, it was the best great job done by presiding officer now comes the t mode table topic master so the table topic master the topic was wonderful i just liked it and i learned a lot from your topic and your theme was connotation it was really interactive and uh, the started meeting was very very interactive with the audience so no audience was felt like it is very boring or something is out of our idea like image but this was really wonderful you explain and you was guiding everything like easy way to understand every member and all the audience was very active so this was a wonderful uh, team mode role so great job you have done and it was very interesting so let's give a huge round of applause and you have done introduce the general evaluator very well and even the top uh, table topic master you have introduced you have done your job all out of 100 everything you have done the perfect so great job done let's give a huge round of applause for our toastmaster of the day sunil gupta next come table topic master suchita nagar so suchita nagar uh, there was a thing like uh, little you was late i think for the online meeting 
the topic was appropriate, at least you could have come a bit at 7.15 during the role checking and all. It will be easy for you to attend and it will be easy for everyone that uh, uh, role takers are on time. So you could have done that one. And the topic was all interesting. All the members were audience were ready to take, as whether the guest or a Toastmaster or a seasoned Toastmaster. All were very engaged and everyone was raising your, the, their hand to take up your topic. So it was really wonderful job, did a great job. And uh, you have uh, uh, invited guests to take participate in, uh, participation. So that was a great job. Uh, thank you. Let's give a huge round of applause for the Toastmaster of the day. A table topic master, sorry. Let's give a huge round of applause to table topic master. So uh, next overall meeting, uh, I just felt that role takers has to come before like 7.15, before the meeting time starts. So 7.15 minutes before they'll come, it will be easy. So here our counter, Rahul, Toastmaster Rahul, or uh, Swami, I request you because when you came, there was a, uh, a role taker problem and uh, someone had to message you. That is not the right way. In Gabby's, we always see all the role takers will be on before time. So if it is 15 minutes, they'll be always on prior time. So please, I request you also and all the role takers, please be next meeting regular on time so that it will be easy for everyone. So everything, it was, it went very well. I enjoyed thoroughly as being as a, uh, a listener of a uh, table to, to, Toastmaster of the day, that uh, team and uh, all the role takers, everything went very well. So great job. I thoroughly enjoyed being as your general evaluator. And uh, next, uh, I'll, re I'll give the virtue stage for our Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day. Over to you. Thank you, General Elevator. Please give her a huge, huge round of applause because she is playing. She has played wonderfully the role of uh, G and she was playing the role for the first time. Great job, Mita. Thank you. Please, I would request all of you that please don't leave the meeting. I have some, you know, exciting and interesting questions. Now, why we are talking about connotations? What is the importance of connotative, connotative words in public speaking? Connotations play a vital role in effective communication and public speaking, influencing how messages are perceived and received by the audience. There are two good reasons you have to care about connotations. First reason, to influence your audience. As a speaker, you can influence your audience with the words you choose. The connotations, your chosen words, of your chosen words, determine whether your statement is biased or unbiased. Suppose you say that he is really stingy when it comes to giving. As you know, I asked in the uh, uh, third, third uh, part that stingy is a, uh, a word which has negative connotation. So that's why this sentence gives a negative feeling. It is an attack, not just a statement. So, and instead of using stingy, you can choose some positive words. So can you tell me some positive words apart from frugal? Because we have already talked about frugal. Tell me any word coming to your mind. True. Economical, Safi. Economical. Economical. One word. Another. 
चीप चीप नेगेटिव अफोर्डेबल अफोर्डेबल यस कॉन्फिडेंस आई थिंक अफोर्डेबल इज आल्सो नेगेटिव इट गेट्स प्रूडेंट 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 ओके आई टेल यू सम वर्ड्स दैट आई हैव careful economical thrifty and so by choosing words with the right connotations or with no connotations you can present a non biased text or biased text ranging from subtly nudging your audience towards with a scathing comment it's all in your word choice and the connotations of those words now second reason why should we think about uh, connotations use connotation to speak concisely and precisely so can you tell me that what is the difference between concise and precise concise is brief precise is to the point you may be brief but still not may not be to the point yes so we are right and the best speech is concise and precise writing or speaking concisely is about word efficiency you know in table topic evaluation sarodatta suggested to sana that she used 200 words she could have said the same thing in around 20 words so th- this is what efficiency you can say you know uh, a larger uh, larger or uh, thing in few words and writing precisely or speaking precisely ensure that your listeners taken your ideas accurately to the point so you can write a speech concisely and precisely by using two techniques number one is using descriptive words that carry the correct connotation let's talk about using descriptive words there is a sentence that okay i put in the chat box sentence now you have to replace uh, the word looked we want to drop the adverb furiously so tell me the word we can replace looked because Fell. we want to help help no felt so david saw furiously at his critics anyone Seen. actually we have to uh, replace the word looked so that we can drop we can remove the adverb uh, furiously so we, we have to use a word that has you know connotation that furiously frustrated and shitty okay now i think i have to tell glared david glared at his critics so with a strong descriptive word like glare we can uh, drop the adverb the adverb furiously so by using uh, using descriptive words we can write a speech you know concisely and precisely now we move on to using words with the correct connotations 
again there is a sentence example his proposal is unusual so it is a uh, it uh, the sentence gives Strange. a negative feeling yeah strains let me finish let me ask what i am going to ask first so uh, the sentence is giving a, a negative feeling so i think unusual is a, uh, the word is the word which has negative connotation okay so we want to replace the word with positive connotation this proposal is awesome awesome is the kind of beautiful or you know but unusual any word okay unique different unique of beat of beat of beat okay okay if i say okay if i say his proposal is extraordinary extraordinary is same to unusual i think yes i think so i think extraordinary is again like saying that it's like it's good uh it's very good that's what we use yeah. unusual no so unusual means that the proposal may yeah. not be but it is unusual like for example yeah. demonetization demonetization is an unusual proposal it does not mean it is amazing or extraordinary but uh, so yeah you are right so now we i have changed the you know connotation positive connotation extraordinary unusual was negative what times extraordinary is a word which has positive same meaning positive okay yeah so in conclusion thinking about connotation will help you to nail the right word it will allow you to create an unbiased speech by selecting words with no or very light connotations or you can uh, write a speech a biased speech by selecting words with connotation that suit your needs last but not least connotation is a powerful tool words can be used as weapons and the meanings of words are often loaded now i'll wrap the th- i i'll wrap up the theme and hand over the virtual stage to the presiding officer for announcing the results and further proceeding thank you thank you so much um... so nil i absolutely love this theme of today's meeting because the meeting was more like a grammar lesson uh, and uh, you were extremely engaging you know you asked so many different kind of connotations so absolutely loved it thank you so much and you always manage to keep the audience engaged you're always high on energy um, i think uh, whenever i don't feel well and uh, i see you as a team or i think i should dial in because that will actually lift my energy somewhere back up thank you so much sunil for doing it okay so uh, i see true uh, i see few guests in the meeting i will take their feedback i'll start with dui because dui is joining us for the first time yes dina will come to you you bala elios they're more like family so we are going to come to them later uh, we'll first ask people who are joining us for the first time or at least have not joined us many times before uh do we would you want to share your feedback about the meeting okay if not kendall i see kendall kato kendall any quick feedback okay then we'll have to go to bala bala anything you would want to share quickly as usual uh, to dtm sarab i always love joining this clubs meeting and today especially when you were the table topic evaluator it was much more 
exciting and much more fruitful, I would say. That's the only thing. And like you said, I always keep coming. And sometimes I'm late and don't feel that I just come and crash land for the table topics. It's because sometimes this timing is where I come from office. And I'm, you can see me. I'm just in my the clothes for the entity office. Other than that, perfect meeting, great evaluations, and great feedbacks. Thank you. Look forward to being in the club's meetings as much as possible in the future. Thank you. And back to you, DTM Saurabh. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Bala. Elias, anything you would want to add? In terms Hello. Of Hello. Yes. This is a great meeting, everybody. I love the team invitation. And I feel like I'm being engaged during the meeting from the beginning until the end. So yes, uh, it took it took me back when I was a student of English education. So practically, I was a uh, an English teacher, and I learned this very much during my college. And this is one of my most favorite topics. Because like what I said on the Zoom chat, we can set the tone of our conversation, of our speech, of our daily communication just by using the connotation. So yes, uh, thank you for bringing up this topic, Sunil. And yes, this is definitely the hidden word, the hidden power of words. Yes, now we have found the hidden gem of this topic. Back to you, Sarah. Thank you so much, Elias. Dina, yes. Very good. Thank you. Dina, thank you. You're your expressions always say the full story. I can always see more than, I can always hear more than what you're conveying because you're so expressive. Thank you, Dina. You always brighten up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'll now quickly now announce the results for today's meeting. So the best talks I will take up for today is Toastmaster Shri Hari Acharya, the grammarian for today. Congratulations, Shrihari. Shrihari is still there. I think he has left the meeting. Um, the next is the favorite table topic speaker. Uh, this is a tie between Toastmaster Dina McInroy and Toastmaster Bala. Heartiest congratulations, Toastmaster Bala and Toastmaster Dina McInroy. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And the uh, uh, favorite role taker for today is yours truly. Thank you so much for your love and generosity. I appreciate this. And with this, I would uh, adjourn this meeting of the Gabby's Online Toastmasters Club. See you at the Gabby's International Toastmasters Club on Thursday, 7 p.m. And please don't forget to join us for the area contest on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. The meeting is hereby adjourned.